Hi everyone, it's Shannon and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. Thank you so, so much to Christina, the DIY mommy, for inviting me to be a part of this amazing collaboration today. Today's video is extra special as I have joined in with a group of YouTubers who are all collaborating together today to not only bring you inspiration, but also bring awareness to an amazing organization called Habitat for Humanity. Now, I am no stranger to this organization as we did a lot of shopping at their ReStore as I was building my she shed. This is an amazing place where you can go and find one of a kind salvaged items. Not only do they have a lot of character, but they also have a lot of history behind them. And I was fortunate enough to find a chandelier there that I redid, as well as a over 100 year old pocket door that has added so much warmth and history to this new building and new structure, as well as my front door, which is something I was looking for and saved a bundle purchasing from the ReStore versus buying new at a retail store. So you can definitely find some amazing treasures there. And the great part about it is you are also giving back as you make those purchases from the ReStore to Habitat for Humanity. And their mission is to bring people together to build homes, community, and hope. And their vision is a world where everyone has a decent place to live. And there are a couple different ways you can donate to this amazing organization. You can of course go to a ReStore in your area and make purchases there and all of that money will be donated right back into Habitat for Humanity. Or if you don't have a ReStore in your area, all of us in this collaboration are making it super easy for you. We will all have a donate button underneath our videos that you can click and directly donate straight to them. So as you can see behind me, my office looks a little bit different and that is thanks to these awesome cabinets that we found at the ReStore probably a year and a half ago now. We had every intention of using them for the cabinets for our built-ins next to the fireplace that we just completed. However, we quickly realized that these were base cabinets, but they were pretty shallow and we needed much deeper ones. So these kind of got sat off into the garage and in storage for a little while, but I definitely knew they would come in handy one day and they finally have. So I'm excited to share with you today what these cabinets look like before of the little bit of elbow grease and work that we put into them to restore them. And then of course the after of what they look like now. So I wanted to get started by giving you a close up look at the before, which is basically how we purchased them right off the restore floor. You can see we paid $60 for each cabinet. And like I said, these were originally base cabinets. You can see where there used to be a countertop on the top. However, they are very, very shallow. So they were only about 12 inches deep. So we decided we were gonna turn them into wall cabinets instead of base cabinets. All right, so I kind of wanted to give you all a look at this space before. I actually have a full tour on my office if you want to go watch that, and then you can kind of see the whole space because I have cabinets over here and behind me I have a desk, and you can go back and watch all of that. This cabinet right here is actually an Ikea hack, and I have a full video on that. This right here alone in this space has been amazing it's very very organized and it also provides me with this countertop space so i have all of this workspace so i absolutely love this about the room as well as these cabinets over here on this side but what i found now now that i've been in here working for about eight months now is that this space and this wall is really nice and convenient however I'm needing some more storage space. So my plan is to take all of this down. I wanna put one of the cabinets on each side and add some shelves in between. And that will provide me some extra storage as well as it will hide anything um, so it doesn't look so cluttered. And the shelf will kind of give me some display space. I love this calendar that's kind of been handy, but obviously I can use um, a different kind of smaller calendar um, the rest of it I can kind of live without, especially when I have some shelves and some cabinets up there, I can put some of that away into those. So I'm just trying to make the space more efficient and work better for my workflow. 
So of course, the first thing I needed to do was just empty this space before I could even really get started working on the cabinets. So I just took everything out, took everything down off of the walls. That gave me a nice, clean, blank slate to work with. I also removed the sticky tiles that were on the wall. Those were from a previous Dollar Tree DIY. I also removed the outlet covers and light switch plate and also added spackle to the walls where there were some damage from removing things and holes from all the nails and screws. Now it's finally time to move on and start working on the actual cabinets. So like I said, these were base cabinets, so they had feet on them. So I put some painter's tape on the bottom, drew a straight line, and took my circular saw to cut through that bottom part and just pulled that right off. There was a lot of glue and like construction adhesive. And there was also this kick plate at the bottom that was basically just glued on. I don't even think it was nailed in. So I just took a hammer to it and it had some fun demo time getting all of this set up and ready to actually be wall cabinets. Then I went ahead and removed the inside shelves. These cabinets had some really cool old and unique hinges on them and I definitely wanted to save them and reuse them again when we went to put this back together. So I just took them, washed them really well and did my best not to lose any of the screws uh, as I uh, disassembled everything. We also had one cabinet that had a little bit of a structure issue so Brian took care of that adding some staples to a corner piece that had come off as well as adding some construction adhesive to the back and braced it together to hold it into place and make it work again. So then it was time to add these to the wall finally after the glue had set so this was really easy they were actually pretty light they weren't super duper heavy cabinets. Uh, so we just made sure that our cabinets were uh, level before just adding some three inch screws into the wall, making sure we found studs. The cool thing about our she shed is I knew I wanted to put cabinets up here at some point. So we actually built studs into the wall as brace pieces, knowing eventually this was going to happen. So we knew right where those studs were and knew that once we got these attached to the wall, they would be nice and sturdy and hold really well. All right, so we got the cabinets all attached to the wall and now it's time to paint them because obviously you can see the sides are like a wood color even though the fronts were white. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the doors and the sides and the fronts and everything. Just using this chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. It's in the color linen white, so it's just a plain white. And I'm gonna use my chalk paint brushes to paint them. All right, so I have my cabinet front set up out here so I can start painting them. I need to clean them really well. And I also have some like leftover sticker goo that I need to get off of these before I can start painting. But the great thing about chalk paint is that I will be able to just throw it on there. There's no prep required except cleaning them really well. And then I'll probably do a couple coats just to make sure I have a nice, clean, smooth finish.
These cabinet doors were actually in really good shape, but you can tell over time they just kind of get worn, they get scratches and scuffs, and they were dingy even after cleaning them really well, but I knew a little bit of chalk paint would bring them right back to life again. So you can see I'm using my paint brushes, which are made for chalk paint. They are by Vintage Tonality. They are my favorite. I will link them down in the description box below. You can find them on Amazon. And you can see over on the left side of my screen, or you could there for a second, um, I have a china cabinet and I actually use these paint brushes to refinish and restore that whole entire thing. It just makes it a so much easier and it's compatible with chalk paint and you can use these brushes over and over and over again so once i got all of the doors with two coats of paint on them i also went into my office and started working on the cabinet sides i even did the bottom i'm not sure why cabinets don't usually have the bottoms painted but i wanted mine white so of course everything minus the insides of the cabinets got two coats of chalk paint once everything was painted, I started working on the wall too. I wanted to give this a fresh coat of paint, so I needed to sand down all of the spackle. And then the wall paint is different than the chalk paint, so I needed to do some, some touch-ups with that and also put a fresh coat of paint on the walls. So it was fun to add the shelves into the cabinets finally and start seeing these come together. I decided to go ahead at this point and also add the shelves that were going to go in between the cabinets. Not only is this going to provide me with some additional storage space, but also a fun little display space, which I was really looking forward to having. And it also made this unit look more of like a built-in and custom piece. So what I'm doing here is adding a small strip of wood to each bottom edge of the cabinets. I made sure they were good and level and then added some construction adhesive to the back and a few brad nails. And that's basically what is going to hold our shelves up and I used a one by 10 cut down to size as the shelf top. And then to finish off this whole look, I added a couple pieces of trim to the front, just using some brad nails to keep them into place. This kind of gave them more of a chunky look, so they look thicker than they are, but they're not as heavy. Also gives it more of a finished look, and once they're painted, it will all blend together beautifully. Then it was time to finally add the hinges back onto the cabinets as well as the doors, and at this point, things were really looking good. I also decided I wanted different hardware for the doors instead of the ones that had come with it and they were more of a bar style instead of a knob. So we had to drill an extra hole and we had this jig on hand. We love it. It makes it so much more easy to consistently place your holes for hardware um, without having to measure and it keeps everything precise and even across all of your cabinets. So I will link that down in the description box below as well as this hardware if I can find it too. They're both from Amazon. And once we had the new hardware installed, then I went ahead and chalk painted the shelves so that they would match the cabinets. So here's a quick look after everything was installed and painted, but I wanted to give you one more before look of this space, which was beautiful and functional and I did love it. But now here is an updated look with the new cabinets, which will provide me with so much more storage and functionality for this space. I 
I'm so glad we added these two shelves in between the units. Not only does it really tie everything together and looks really cute, but they are holding uh, several of the things that I'm constantly grabbing and needing while I'm working, including glue sticks, my paint stir sticks, jute, and my chalk paint brushes. Of course, there's some cute little additions in there too to make the space more homey. But for the most part, these are all items that I use on a regular basis, so it's nice to have them handy. I also wanted to show you the inside of this cabinet. It's pretty much going to become my paint supply cabinet. So at the top, I have buckets for my paint brushes and my foam brushes along with both chalk paint and fabric paint and then also a place at the bottom for some bigger cans of paint that and some spray paint that I'll be adding in here very soon. So I'm so happy with the way this space turned out, but there's still a few things we would like to do to this space, including possibly adding a tile backsplash. I found this pretty gray stick up tile at Home Depot, but I'd love to hear your opinions down in the comments below. Should I add a backsplash or just leave it white? Also, we would like to add some type of molding to the tops of the cabinets to really finish off the look. This was definitely my absolute most favorite thrift flip ever. It was a pretty big one. It didn't take too much work. It took a couple days worth of elbow grease, but it all really came together. I love now that I have some additional storage within my office and my craft room. I love that it's all hidden, so it doesn't necessarily have to look nice behind the doors. And I love that my craft supplies are extra accessible now. So this is a fun collaboration. Thank you again to Christina for inviting me to be a part of it. We all do have a playlist that I'll link down in the description box. So if you enjoy thrift flips, there will be a ton of inspiration for you there. And thank you in advance to anyone who takes the time to make a small donation to Habitat for Humanity. All of us in this collaboration are as well. Thank you all so, so much for joining me for this video today. Please take a second, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.